25 years ago, Professor Ishikawa started work on what is currently the world's fastest high-speed image processor. 15 years ago, he started research on the world's fastest actuator. Together, 40 years of research have resulted in this, a robotic hand. At the moment, the hand looks innocent enough. It plays the classic game of rock, scissors, paper, or jankenpong, as it's known in Japan. But Ishikawa's creation has a dark secret. It cheats, and it cannot lose. At first, I developed the same uh, performance as uh, human beings. However, to support the human, the same performance is not enough. We have to develop the higher than humans. The image processor tracks your hand's movement more quickly than the human eye can register. Before you even know that has happened, it sees what sign you have made and has sent the winning move to the actuator. A few milliseconds of process that have been four decades in the making. Moving very, very quickly. That's extraordinary. It's a fine parlour trick, but so what? Well, what matters is not the game, but what the technology behind it could ultimately be used for. In near future, high-speed image can easily be used in the industrial applications at low cost. Ishikawa says his sensors would come in very handy on a self-driving car, in a high-speed manufacturing plant or even for sports television. But others, especially those involved in military innovation, see even more potential. Intercepting missiles, battlefield robots, and super-responsive drones. Ishikawa is against this, and so, for the last 70 years, have been most of Japan's state universities. But across town, at Japan's defense ministry, momentum and Abe government policy is building towards a change. For the public in Japan, robots have always been less about the military-industrial complex and more about humanoid creations like this, Honda's Asimo, which is now advanced enough to march out of the lab and into the real world. To make a robot like this hop represents thousands and thousands of hours of robotics development. Yes, it's a bit of fun. Yes, it was here to entertain the crowds. But what's going on behind this is really significant. And what Japan does with these robotics in terms of practical applications, that's what the world needs to be watching. By studying the uh, human working, we can uh, get the working theory to support the human uh, to, by using uh, robotics technology. So our target is an elder person or a patient who's suffered from the uh, stroke. The FT's Kana Inagaki took the sixth generation of Honda's assisted walking devices for a test drive. So when you first wear it, it's actually um, hard to tell the difference, but when you keep on walking, you can feel the pressures on your legs and also on your hips. When you actually climb the stairs, you can feel the pressure helping to lift your legs naturally. So the Robots Japan's rolls out are impressive, cute, and fun. Honda and its rivals have spent millions, and they've caught the public imagination. Now, finally, the technology is making its way into the daily life of ordinary people. It's incremental, rather than revolutionary. But there's no doubt that the tipping point for robots has come. The big question for roboteers like Ishikawa and the engineers at Honda is how far they want things to go. Every day, Professor Ishikawa receives hundreds of emails from companies around the world interested in the potential commercial applications for his technology. He also told us at the end of every international conference, he's approached by people who are interested in the potential military applications for his technology. Tokyo University has placed a ban for 70 years on its professors engaging in research that could lead to military applications. But there are people who want that to change. So the robot we watch today that could beat me every time at rock, scissor, paper. Could we one day be seeing that on the battlefield? Leo Lewis, Financial Times in Tokyo.